Hello and welcome to Newspeak. I'm Peter Whittle. This is the New Culture Forum's look at the week's news. Uh, before we do that, I um, just want to say that this week we had our very first local NCF Locals event. It was in Southend on Sea in Essex. Uh, great success. It was lovely. So thank you to the people who came along if you're watching now. Um, obviously, we're going to be having more. I can tell you there's a date coming up in Manchester later this month and indeed then after that in Norwich. Uh, so this is something we're keeping true to our word. Uh, we're going to be going around the country. Uh, so keep an eye out for those dates. Uh, now, this week I think you'd agree that if you look at the mainstream media, the main story seems to have been the Brexit uh, deal <coughs> with Rishi Sunak, which of course uh, I suppose is important. Um, however, we tend to choose subjects here which are of greater concern to you, certainly, and, and to us. And uh, two of the subjects today actually uh, revolve around schools. So of course, there is this case of the Quran uh, being scuffed, it seems accidentally, in a school in Yorkshire, and the consequences of that, and what's happened as a result of that. And then also we've had extraordinary situation of kids being taught by a drag queen in the Isle of Man um, about the fact that there are 73 different genders. Uh, you might say this is now part of the course, but anyway, we're going to be talking about those today. Also, get your pronouns ready. I do know that you do have pronouns uh, because we're going to be talking a bit about misgendering too. Um, to start with, or you're joking apart, uh, this situation that we have, which is, I should add, 10 miles from uh, Batley Grammar School, mm. where in fact the uh, teacher is actually still in hiding, I might mm. add, mm. having given the, his pupils pictures of the uh, uh, Muhammad, the uh, Islamic prophet. Can you just uh, tell us exactly what happened in this case, actually, Rafe, with the Quran apparently being damaged and the outcome? Sure. Well, it's a disturbing but altogether unsurprising story, alas, today. What we had is a school in, in Wakefield. Uh, an autistic boy brought, brought in a copy of the Quran for losing a game, a computer game, as part of a day. He had to bring in from home a copy of, of the Quran, uh, which he read out in the playground. Um, it was a, as he was bringing it in with three other boys, there was a bit of a scuffle, and the, the book just fell on the ground, uh, but by no one's fault. Uh, and in the process of falling to the ground, it got slightly scuffed. It got a little smudge on one of the pages. That was it. A harmless, a harmless action. The school has admitted that there was no malicious intent here whatsoever. But the firestorm that has developed from this harmless story that should have been dealt with in school, the school reached out to the police, um, who said that they were looking into the matter, and uh, they later charged the, 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 this incident with it as a, as a hate incident, even though there was no malice of intent. Mm -hmm. Um, you then had community leaders being consulted, as is always the case with these sorts of stories. These unelected, unappointed community leaders, which communities do they actually represent? Because the young Muslims of today really have no connection to these elder people. Things happen completely in tandem uh, with, the, with this. You had this horrifying scene of uh, uh, a press conference held that was led by uh, a Muslim counsellor um, who had said essentially that um, uh, if this had been an adult who had committed this, there would be huge pro protests outside the school, but because it was a child, they weren't going to have huge protests. Um, That's nice of them. And then it turned out that there had been death threats by other school children against this young autistic boy. And next to them all was the poor mother of this boy, who looked like she was a hostage in an ISIS video, being forced to deliver a message saying, I'm not going to prosecute because I don't want my child to be be, to be harmed and you think my gosh we've got to this sort of state of affairs where the police turn a blind eye to death threats mm. and a harmless incident in the playground becomes a, uh, becomes a hate incident mm. and uh, quite frankly you know we don't live in an Islamic state we don't have mm. modern blasphemy mm. laws here mm. um, and yet what we're having through these inactions in, in by the police in terms of death threats mm. and by this deliberate attempt to defend uh, the indefensible you've got blasphemy through the back door yeah. and you just have to think you know a lot of these people this is only you know as you said 10 miles from from uh, from Batley it's 30 minutes down the road from Rotherham where we have of course the infamous rape gang scandals 
A large population here is, is of Pakistani origin, and of course we know what happens in Pakistan with blasphemy laws. You get people being stoned in the street, being burnt alive over this, and you just have to think how long is it going to be before you get a far, a far more dangerous and scary result. Yeah, I mean, what else can I say after that? I mean, that really does sum it up, doesn't it? I think that there's always this threat of violence, isn't there? That's, that's how these things work. You know, the community leaders come with this hyperbole, this incredibly inflated language. Um, and we just see the, the headmaster, the school, the police, and the poor parents just capitulating because they're terrified. Now, I remember one of the first times I came on this show, oh, last year, remember the, the story about the cinema manager? Yeah. Who was yeah. showing a, a, it was a similar kind of thing, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. It was a film, and because people didn't like it, then mob rule kind of takes over. So what we've got, essentially, is, is what Rafe's just said, isn't it? It's it's blasphemy laws. It's Sharia by the by by the back door. The thing is, though, is that, you know, you sort of the, for me the most appalling thing is to see this policeman sitting there. Oh, yeah. I don't know how senior he was actually, but mm. in a way beside the point, you sort of think he w he was just c he was actually c condoning mm. by his presence what was going on. Mm. I mean, I, isn't that appalling? I mean, well, you know, I mean, it's it's so bad. I find myself agreeing with Ash Sarkar today she, she said? well she said i can't believe uh, something's happened so immoral as a 14 year old autistic boy who's been threatened with death threats being suspended from from shamed and suspended from school and that's precisely what's happened doesn't it this is a this is a public shaming mm. essentially mm. when this 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 little boy who has disabilities has done nothing wrong the policeman was saying oh this is a this is a sad day this is a sad Didn't they day. record it as a hate incident? That's right. But I'm glad that Ash Sarkar has said this because yeah. you know, the, the left are notorious for their silence. I should say Ash Sarkar, she's uh, very much uh, on the, she's a radical left a communist uh, for Navarra Media. She works yeah. for Navarra Media. Yeah. And, uh, and the left are notoriously silent when it comes to the misogyny and yeah. the, the racial hatred you get from Islam, whereas they're the first ones to burn an effigy of the Pope yeah. over issues like abortion or yeah, over yeah, condom use yeah. in Africa and so forth, or the lack of female priests in the Catholic Church. Uh, so it's good to see this happening. But th this is an institutional failure on all levels. We saw this again in Rotherham with the rape gangs there. The lessons have not been learned. And I don't see, if we're still at this position now, that the lessons ever will no, be learned. I, I there is no hope, be. I think, to have any faith that the police will actually do their duty and t treat Islam as if it were Christianity. Because, my gosh, you can go into any gallery in Shoreditch, I'm mm. sure, and find some anti-Christian mm. artwork mm. there, mm. Bibles being used in some sac um, sacrilegious way or being desecrated. You know, I should have the right to tear up pages of the Quran and make a papier mache portrait of Muhammad. Mm. But I know that if I did that, I probably would be charged with a hate incident. Yes. And that is outrageous <coughs> in the land of free expression. But just, I mean, just compare this, compare the actuality of this to the rhetoric around the, the, the far right scare. Okay, that, I think that is a really good comparison because you see, you see, the institutions, the police, kowtowing to this intimidation. Whereas you've got a few people, you know, rightfully um, worried about what, what, you know, what is potentially happening to their 15 year old daughters when you've got a, a, a hotel full of asylum seekers there and we don't know who they are or where they're from, mm. you know. And I think the comparison there is, is really well worth making because, because one is real and it's being treated as though it isn't, and the other one is complete fantasy, and it's being treated as though it's real. You know, you say about institutional failure as well. I mean, the thing is, what always strikes me about these occasions, it's like I'm like a broken record, I'm afraid, um, is no chance of any senior political figure commenting. Apparently, is it right that the Home Secretary said something about this, well, uh, she oh, she said that she was concerned about all of this. Mm -hmm. But you would expect, if somebody like Suella Breverman, who's made her cut her cloth by being hard line, mm -hmm. can come out with something so measly, measly mouse mm -hmm. as that, rather concerned. than being yeah. definitive on this point and saying mm -hmm. we have no place for this in our culture. Mm -hmm. Everyone has the right to criticize any religion. And you know, just as the school, the school said that um, the book wasn't treated with the respect it deserves. 
well, who decides mm -hmm. how much respect this book deserves? You know, the humanists have come out yeah. and said this is outrageous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't have any uh, obligation to respect any book whatsoever. Mm -hmm. but, the, but there's something else th here, isn't there, as well? And, and it's about the, the news agendas. So it's a it's a mainstream news thing. They they, they just don't really touch it, or they don't touch it. Have in a they not touched way. it at all? Really, well, they might have touched it, but they haven't. Um, they haven't touched it in a way that is, you know rightfully outraged and and the, the people are, are, are just talking about this on social media it isn't getting it isn't getting the the attention it deserves and the comment it deserves perhaps it's just being presented i think it was presented in something like the you know the Wakefield Chronicle or something like that, mm. and that's that's where it's gone uh, viral. But mm. but I think in the mainstream media it's been it's been touched upon, but, but and nothing's going to happen. You know when yeah, that film yeah. that you referred to was, was pulled, yeah. Yeah. I said at the time every cinema should screen that film mm. just mm. to make the stand. The only way you can oppose these people is with an aggressive assertion mm. of our Western cultural values. Well, the, the reason the reason I, sorry, Brave. The reason I mentioned that was I think the first time. It, it was one of the first times I, I came on as a regular on this show, mm -hmm. so that the story really sticks in my mind. And we and we talked about that risible, pathetic figure who was just a, like a rabbit in headlights. Oh, was a cinema who manager. Was, who was the cinema manager? Yes. Yeah. But when you look at this story, that's the police. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, the police. Yeah, yeah. But you, you have to also remember, you know, <laughs> I, I, just sort of, I sort of, I've given up on this sort of issue at the moment because when you had the Charlie Hebdo incident in yeah. 2015, mm -hmm. when you had this mass yeah. shooting uh, in, in France of the of the cartoon headquarters that published mm -hmm. a cover or image featuring Mohammed, and you had at that time, I think, a wonderful response by other media, where lots of media actually reprinted the image of Mohammed in their newspapers and magazines. Not everyone; some actually are damned by not doing it, but many of them did do mm -hmm. it. That was should have been the crunch point. That should have been the epiphany for everybody in the West as to mm. how you should respond to these things. Mm. If that sort of a tragedy didn't spur mm. the Western world into decisively tackling this issue, I don't think anything actually can. No. And I don't think we're ever going to, to find a way to, to get ourselves out of this. But we need to actually have some way of aggressively asserting our values yeah. and letting them know that we will not stand down. Because the more you tolerate this, you create precedent after precedent after precedent where they, whereby it becomes accepted by them mm. that we will always yield mm. to them. But we will never do that because of the, the broader context of, of how our values are under attack in every single instance. And the other stories we're going to cover today will illustrate that point, won't it? There's, there's no way that we can, we can, we can stand up for, uh, you know, and, and push back against religious intolerance when, when we can't even define what a woman is. Well, uh, yes. I mean, I... I don't really know. You know, when you say aggressively assert, I know what you you mean by that. But you know, it does worry me. What would it take? I mean, I remember. Yeah, you know, I know this isn't terrorism, and it's not. No one's saying it's terrorism. But you know, when people stood in Manchester and sang "Don't Look Back in Anger" after the Ariana Grande thing, I remember thinking they've just slaughtered your daughter. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Mm. What is it going to take for you? Don't know. You should be angry. You should be angry. Of course, you, you should. Know, you know this ridiculous. Well, solution is difficult here, and it's getting worse year by year. Yeah. There's a number mm. of, of of migrants coming into this country come from Islamic states. Now, I wrote I wrote an, an essay on this larger subject in this book, Fighting Back, that we just printed, yeah. where <coughs> I was amazed to discover that British Muslims are far more likely than French or German Muslims to identify as Muslim first mm. and British second. And we have a far larger percentage of British Muslims who sympathise mm. with ISIS and fundamentalism. So they're not just terrorists, but they're the sympathisers, almost twice the rate. They're still a minority, but I think it's a 15%. 15% of the numbers who are over it's here, we're talking percentage. about 150,000 yeah. people who sympathise with all this. Mm. This is only going to get worse. And yes, you ask, how do you respond to this? Well, one way is through the education system to actually teach the values of freedom of speech and expression. But, the, but even there again, Denmark has the best solution to this, but Denmark has a limited, uh, has a better chance. Mm. They ensure that no more than 40% of pupils in any school mm. are of a minority ethnicity. Mm. So the majority are always white Danes. Mm. Mm. And I don't know how we can get to that situation in these areas, which are so heavily mm. Islamic, but that seems to be the only way to do it is to make them a minority in a larger white culture mm. in, order to in order to assert the supremacy of Western values. Well, in other words, you mean integrate, presumably. Yeah. Integrate. I mean, you know, because uh, there's not, uh, in the name of multiculturalism, actually, you've got lots of areas which are monocultural. Mm. Right? So you mean basically what they've done in 
Denmark is actually forced integration, isn't it? Exactly, and they've, they've torn down ghettos in order to mm. ensure that, uh, and, and, they, and they've kicked out people who have criminal records, they can't get social housing. But, but, in order, but in order to do that, you have to be very clear about what your value system is. Mm. And we, are, we, we, oh, yeah. don't, we don't have a British value system. That's the problem. We've got a value system that absolutely and totally kowtows to the, to the intolerance that they're, they're demonstrating. All of this under a conservative regime. And all of this under a conservative regime. I think actually that should be some kind of motto mm. at the mm. end of every show we yeah. do. And all like of this. this. Wouldn't it be great if we had a Tory government of 80 majority? Mm. Uh, wouldn't it be great? It, it, with this, just one more point on this. Um, Harry Miller, if you remember, uh, was the man who sort of managed to get the police to change their guidelines on what's called non-crime hate incidents. This was supposedly a hate incident. Mm. This one. He said that actually they've gone back to square one. It was a Pyrrhic victory, really, because they've gone back to square They are now treating these things as crime, which is a great worry. In other words, you know, people say, what is a non-crime hate incident? And how dare you be, you know, reporting them and keeping stats on them? Mm. And all and she said, we've got around it by actually treating it as a crime. I don't quite know how that works. No. You well, know? But again, it, it's, it's part of the, the, the broader context that illustrates how the whole thing works. I mean, I know so many people, women, who have been untoward about paedophiles and, and they are, you know, they're getting visits from the police saying, oh, you know, don't say that, don't say, or, or um, God forbid if someone's misgendered somebody, you know, you will get the plod round straight away. Yeah, yeah. So it's all of these things, all of these things that a few years ago we wouldn't have even recognised as things, let, a, let alone crimes, are the most, are, the, are, are, the, are leading the agenda. Whereas, you know, the, the, the police dealing with things like house break-ins, muggings, rape, mm -hmm. murder mm -hmm. and all of those things mm -hmm. come way, way down the list. Well, uh, you know, on this... You know, School, <coughs> shockingly weak uh, school authorities here. In the Isle of Man this week, the actually not maybe the school, but the local council or the Isle of Man government, mm. um, you know, wanted a, a review and inquiry into something that had been happening in that school, Philip. I mean, mm. if you can just tell us about this is about this involves drag queens, doesn't it, and what t kids are being taught. This is, this involves <coughs> drag queens, but the overall educational culture in this school, which which seems to be completely and utterly sex obsessed. Okay, so um, the I'll, I'll 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 give some details in a minute, but what happened was essentially um, the children were alarmed, and they spoke to the teachers, who did nothing. So the children had to take responsibility and speak to their parents. And it was the parents who, who actually sounded the alarm and said, these things are crazy. And I'll just the read out. Did yeah, I'll, really. I'll just read out um, some of the things that have been happening. This is um, Queen Elizabeth's school uh, in Peel on the Isle of Man. have reported that year seven pupils were taught by a drag queen who told them there are 73 genders. Okay. When one upset child responded and said, there's only two, the drag queen allegedly responded and said, you've upset me and made the pupil leave the class. Some 11 year olds at the school were taught about oral and anal sex, while another group learned about sex change operations and were shown how skin graft taken from a girl's arm could be used as an artificial penis, according to reports. And that's from the Telegraph earlier this week. But the thing is about look, everybody, the Isle of Man, you know, had a reputation for being pretty hard and fast. I mean, and being conservative. Mm. I mean, to the point where they were always a bit of a bete noire, weren't yeah. they, for progressives. Mm. And that's one of the reasons why the, um, the great author, uh, George MacDonald Fraser, who wrote the Flashman novels, who uh, viewers might yeah. be familiar yeah, with, yeah. actually moved to the Isle of Man because it was a bit of an oasis. Mm. Um, and, and yet we have this. So the question is, you know, if it's like that in the Isle of Man, my God, what it's like, what's it like in the rest of the country, you know? Mm. Do you think, oh God, you know, I can't bear almost to say the expression, the tide is turning, but do you think that the greater awareness of this whole agenda, the sexual agenda, is making people finally wake up? I mean, parents wake up about school. Well, Miriam Kate, the Tory MP, has, has said, you know, she's very happy to see the government of, of the Isle of Man do this review. Mm. But her great concern is, here in England and Wales, we don't actually know what's going on in our schools. Mm -hmm. Parents, and we, we had, mm -hmm. didn't we? We had uh, Calvin Robinson did a heritage episode where mm -hmm. one lady says she tried her best to actually access materials mm -hmm. 
that her school was teaching her children and she was denied uh, access because of copyright and so forth mm. all these sort of uh, veiled attempts to just um, gloss over the whole issue this is the problem but it, you know it's so outrageous the story that you have a, a drag queen teaching 73 genders telling one child to leave the room mm. because that child said there are only two genders mm. or two sexes let's stop using gender there are only two sexes and he said oh you've hurt me leave the room can mm. you imagine doing that to a young child mm. And you think, what sort of crazy world can see this as being in any way acceptable? Who are these teachers? And then I sort of thought, well, actually, they live in this leftist mm. echo chamber mm. where everything becomes normalized mm. and they become desensitized to the real shock value. Mm. It's like somebody who watches extreme horror or mm. extreme porn. The first time you watch it, you're shocked. But if you spend years watching this extreme stuff, mm. it becomes normalized mm. to you. Yeah, yeah. And I think they yeah. don't actually realize yeah. what they're doing. And they're adults. And the impact that has on a child's mm. mind mm. is even worse. And I've said for years yeah. on this channel and elsewhere, forget schools. It's the teacher training colleges yes, is, that yeah. are essentially the equivalent of the Islamic mm. madrasa. Mm. These are the woke, woke madrasas, teacher mm. training. Yeah. They're churning out. We have fewer than 10% of teachers mm. who vote for right-wing parties in this country. Mm. A huge change from when we were at school. Oh, okay. And yeah. when you're in that echo chamber, suddenly all of these radical ideas mm. are completely normal. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm in the echo chamber. You know, I, I work in a university mm. and, and I work just like literally down the road from Wakefield, actually. I work in Leeds. So I, I know, I know what it's like. Um, but I've, I've also, I, I said a few weeks ago, didn't I, I was, in, I was in a school a few weeks ago and it's literally like going to a, a, a Soviet indoctrination camp. Mm. There were um, murals on the wall, there was a BLM mural, there was an N NHS mural. Um, and, and you really do feel like you're going into this other world. And, and, and if you challenge any of these ideas, that it's, it's not only you're wrong, it's you're wicked, you're evil and there's real shock. Because if because children have just been so indoctrinated, and and it's the indoctrination that's that's the really terrifying thing. I mean, last week we had on uh, on the channel just a wonderful couple, um, uh, Tom and Haley Bowen, who've just started their own school. Uh, so what you're saying is, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I mean, you know, it's it's basically a classical Christian education, um, which uh, basically is is going to prove, I think, very, very popular. But is this the way forward now? I mean, basically, we just need people uh, to start their own school. I mean, isn't, isn't that the way? Is Across that the only way? I can't see. It's too big, isn't it? Well, it's we've championed for a long time this whole concept of building our own institutions. Mm. And nothing is more important, actually, mm. than building mm. our own schools and mm. our own universities. Mm. And I've long championed the idea of the American private colleges, mm. Hillsdale, Claremont, mm. these places that teach a classical mm. civilized education. Mm. And now you have this, this wonderful couple doing that on, this, on the yeah, primary yeah, school uh, level. Mm -hmm. But that's what we need to do. It's only by creating our own institutions that we will be able to actually try to re reverse the tide somewhat. Although people will be forgiven for feeling like King, to King Canute on many of these issues. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I think, uh, basically, I think uh, on the back of that, they've had some donations. I hope they've had more since. And in fact, one job, ap job application uh, from someone who wants to, to work with them. I mean, I, I'm not being uh, frivolous here. I, I, you know, I think what they're doing is, is fantastic. But I, I'd agree with you. I think it's the only way actually mm. for. Uh, I spoke to Matthew Goodwin re recently for an interview that's coming up. <coughs> he was very, very, very sort of doubt, doubtful about the future of universities, for example very much along the same sort of lines. Well, I'm, you know? I'm, I'm really doubtful about the future of arts, humanities and social sciences yes. because um, they seem to be captured, you know, seem, mm. they are captured, mm. aren't they? You know, mm. uh, and if we're talking about um, 73 genders, it's not, it's not dissimilar to 72 virgins in heaven, is it? It's a similar kind of concept and, mm. what, what, and what we've got is a cultish obsession um, with a gendered soul that seems to orientate thinking. And, yeah. you, and that's not thinking. If you're thinking yeah. about 73 genders, well, or 100 genders or whatever it is, then it's just gobbledygook. And of course, the, the sad thing here is, yes, we can create our own institutions in terms of schools, in terms of universities, but not museums and galleries. No, 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 no. When you think of our greatest yeah. nat national assets, but, and, and those, also, th those but, are lost to us, you know? But, but also the, the, the tragedy that, of having to create institutions outside of the mainstream, 
and the responsibility of having to homeschool, for example, and the amount of skill and time and energy that takes to do that properly. You know, it's putting the onus on people in a way that should never, ever be there. When it comes to, you mentioned museums and things, institutions, you know, the, 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 the complete capture of these places. I think, as you said, Philip, there's one way of knowing if they've been captured. They use this term values yeah. all the time. If, if they start using the word values, then, then you know it's yeah. been captured. Um, what, what have you actually given up or don't do anymore? as a result of what's gone on in the past, say, like 10 years. I mean, I say 10 years, that's maybe quite a long time. But I mean, I know there are certain things I, I find it hard. I was a great movie fan. Mm. Love, in fact, I was a film critic for 20 years. Now, rarely. Uh, because I don't want to see what I think is going to make me angry. Mm. What, what, do you, what do you not listen to? Well, it's much, it's, it's much the same. So when I, when I listen to the BBC, as I said before, it's always Radio 4 Extra, which is the archival yeah. material. I love listening to the old stuff. But I, I loved going to the theatre, and now uh, I refuse to go. You know, they just recently had this thing called uh, Best of Enemies, which was about mm. Gore Vidal yeah. and William F. Buckley Jr. Two great men. I respect them both very mm. greatly. A friend of mine was a friend of Gore Vidal. They had a black chap playing William F. Buckley Jr. Now he was actually quite controversial during the civil rights movement. I thought, how could you possibly have a yeah, black yeah, chap playing yeah. this chap? Um, and then again, you you got to the David Copperfield with with uh, with this Dev Patel playing the lead actor. Mm. And it's a shame. I want to watch these things. So go in and the Green Knight mm. again. Dev Patel playing mm. there. I just can't bring myself mm. to watch something which is so historically inaccurate. It mm. is a great shame. But it's interesting to note actually. Is public subsidy. If you go to the theatre, you don't get this working so much <coughs> in the West End. It's the National Theatre in these places. Yeah. And it seems as if it's government if government funding were taken away and they had to become commercially reliant, <laughs> I think the, the the fact that people vote with their feet where they're going to go, I think that might make it a deciding factor. Mm. Do you think I mean is there what do you do you, what do you not read anymore? I was gonna I say mean, it's novels, essentially. I don't I don't read I don't well, read like modern, modern novels. novels. Yeah, I don't read modern novels. So I only read old stuff mm. because you, you, you just can't read modern novels. Even if you're reading gender, uh, uh, gender, there, uh, you know, yeah. there's a Freudian slip, isn't there? Even if you're reading genre stuff, it always comes back to the same thing: it's sexuality, it's gender, mm. it's race, all of those things, mm. relentlessly, relentlessly drilled into you as you read it. So I stopped. I stopped doing that about eight or nine years ago. It's funny because there's a, there's a show that I've been watching on Netflix, which started in 2005, yeah. finished 2020. And I loved the first eight years of the show I've been watching. And it's great. What is it? It's what is called it? Supernatural. And I just enjoyed watching every episode. And then suddenly, around sort of yeah. 2011 or so, yeah. more women are there. And yeah. suddenly, the women, can, these tiny women, can beat up these big brutes. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. That never used to happen bef before. And then, then, you get, then you get, suddenly, everybody has to be a black woman if you're going to be a, a protagonist. And the yeah. antagonist has to be the white male. And you can just sort of chart the history of the woke movement through this one <coughs> television show, where I think someone could probably do a PhD thesis on. <laughs> but but that's, that's part of the, the narrative, which is another narrative. Narrative we, we, we've been talking about, which is the uh, representation and proportion of different kinds of people on television and in adverts and, 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 and all the rest of it. So there's just been some research come out where 45% of people now are, are mm. kind of quite alarmed at how it's completely, um, is it television or adverts, are completely yeah, unrepresentative television. of real life. Disproportionate. Yeah, 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 yeah. and it's only 45. I think mm. uh, William uh, Cluson of the uh, SDP said, well, what about the other 55%? Are they, well, are they blind? A lot of you know. those people, <clears throat> the other 55%, probably do mind, mm. but they are going along with what they think well, they should. Well, the funny thing here is that Lloyds Bank actually did the research re report into this in 2016 and mm. then 2018, and they found in 2016 that 19% mm. of minorities, uh, of people in ads were minorities, and they said this doesn't go far enough. At that time, fewer than 18% of the country yeah. were ethnic minority. Yeah. So here you've got more, 19%. Yeah. By 2018, it was 25% of people in ads were ethnic minorities, far ahead of the 18% that we now know it actually yeah. is. But that's not enough. <laughs> and I thought, well, what is enough for you guys? Well, post George mm. Floyd, we now know that the vast majority of people on ads are actually, um, and they were actually saying 60% we still have 60% of people being white in ads, as if that was somehow a negative. Yeah. Yes, no, it's, it's, it's a, it is, apparently w w uh, people are far more concerned in this country than any other, I think it was a Europe-wide survey, mm. and with pretty good reason actually, because I mean, it, 
know, you do really feel actually sometimes when you watch it as actually, wait a minute, is this actually this country? You know, because it's, it's entirely, isn't it, 90%? Part of it for me is it's, we're just completely removed from reality. Mm. It's, it, it, you know, once you start with these, these, these quotas of representation and, and it's never enough, yeah. it's never enough and it's never enough, you're presenting, you're, this is one of the reasons why I, 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 I don't bother with fiction. Fiction's fiction, but it should speak reality mm. back to you in mm. some kind of way. And none of it does. It speaks a particular code. It, it's fiction that speaks another kind of fiction back to you. Yes. And you're asked to believe it. Yes, yes. It's social engineering. It's social engineering. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's infuriating. I find even just sort of like magazines. I used to, I used to read Vanity Fair, for example. Yeah. You know, it's an American. used to like it. Read it. Uh, the New Yorker. Uh, these things, these kind of... It's not so much on the, these issues. It's more like... The splenetic hatred of Trump, mm. yeah. you know, that that killed it for mm. me. I've just thought, everything is going to be suffused with this. Mm. So and it's also the fact that we now know the political views of people we never should know yes, about. Exactly. Yeah, our yeah. comedians. So I used yeah. to like watching Alan Partridge. I can't watch it now because I know, you know how vitriolic Steve Coogan yeah. is on issues like Brexit yeah. and, and, and so forth. And I don't want to watch what you watch because oh. I know that you loathe me and what I stand for, my yes. views. So why am I going to watch your program? And suddenly you've cut off. The few things that are funny today, if I no mm. longer can watch. <laughs> that's the actually that's the important point. Even if he had a very strong attitude towards Brexit, uh, or say, so, okay, you can kind of live with it, but it's always along with an insult. Mm. It's always an implied insult. Mm. These ghastly people, you know, it's quite. It's right. a new snobbery, right? It's <coughs> kind of condescending. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, totally. But exactly. and, and that and that threads right through the institutions. Mm. You know that that threads through all of the policy, as I was saying the other week, and all of the education, and, and it's, a, it, it's people like us. We, how, can, how can we buy into it? How can, how can we watch it? How can we read it when it's ev every single message within it is geared to hate us, basically? Mm. Well, I mean, on that uh, note, <laughs> yes, no, no. I, 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 I was going to uh, suggest, you know, you, you, you mentioned that unreality and the unreality. While we're in the kind of zone of unreality, uh, Sam Smith, mm. uh, the singer, right, who's now, he's what he calls himself non binary, mm. as he calls it. So therefore, he's like they and them and all the rest of it. He, this, this wonderful piece he done on Breakfast TV recently, he was talking about the fact that he liked fishing or something. Uh, this is, you know, and he said, he talked about fisher them. And, and he kept on referring to, Fisher them, you know, I, you know, I like watching the Fisher them, not Fisher men, you know, and of course they let it all go, right? Mm. I mean, so, someone said, does he do it? Does he do any gigs in Demchester? No. <laughs> 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 Probably not bearing in mind what uh, Noel Gallagher's just said about yeah. him. Yeah. Yes, exactly, because you've had that. Um, and this sort of basically, uh, this wonderful, uh, we're going to show a clip actually, uh, for a bit of light relief, uh, poor guy in it. This was happened in Newham Council this week, where a councillor sort of stepped into this minefield mm. of um, misgendering. So mm. let's just take a, a look at or this. Or we should probably set it up and say yes. that this was a leader of the Green Party in Newham oh, Council okay. who, was, who was supposed to be opposing the budget and stormed out because dealing with the finances of the borough wasn't important. The important thing was he, he was been, misgendered. He, then she had been misgendered <laughs> okay, well, and, here we sto go. And, and stormed out and this poor uh, bewildered council chair had to do this apology. <laughs> I've been informed that I misrepresenting um, the councillors um, them. I should have said them rather than him. So I do apologise for that. And I think that's what's affected him, is it? Uh, there, that's... <laughs> Yes, so my apologies to him for Miss Scotting. Okay, for them. Sorry, you, your heart goes out to him, doesn't it? Yeah, it, really? I, I mean, it's just it's it's so. It reminds me of Faulty Towers and Don't Mention the War. You know, I mentioned it once, but I think I got away with it, you know, or not, as yeah. this case may be. But if you just think about the broader picture there about Newham, all right, so I, I think it's something like this was twenty twenty one. It's probably not going to be that much much different now. 25% um, of people uh, earn below the living wage. 50% of children are living in poverty. Mm -hmm. And this joker's worried about being called them. 
Yeah, yeah. No, well, I and it's, and it's the pure culture clash we have yeah. here because Newham yeah. is the has the second largest Islamic population in the country, <laughs> yes. along with next to Tower Hamlets next door. And uh, you know, I looked at the council list for Newham, you yeah. know, and it's a huge. I couldn't believe how many councillors they have, but yeah. the majority of them were ethnic yeah. minority, pr primarily Muslim. And I just thought, this is when you get the two worlds: the trans lobby meets the Islamic but, lobby. But there's a but there's a particular <laughs> etiquette here, isn't that? Where you know, it, they smell blood. Okay, and they know, and this this poor guy, I think, as we've just mm. seen, is 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 floundering, and oh God, you know, sorry, sorry him, oh them, you know, uh, and and they smell blood, and and it, and they they wind up, they wind up, they wind up, and they flounce out, and it's just, and yeah. and, and that happens with, with all of these things. But it's all you know, performative. It's, it's, yeah, it's all performative. That's the whole point. It's it's self righteous indignation. How dare I'm so important, and my mm. pronouns are so important. How dare you say this? Well, it's a bit like the drag queen that you mentioned on the Isle of Man. Mm. She's not he, she's not really ups, upset. You know, I'm upset. You know, mm. you should go out of the car. No, no, no. It's it's, it's just all of it is with out a jot of sincerity mm. to mm. it. I think. But have you ever been asked for your pronoun? I'm in a, a, a position at the moment where I think I'm about to be. Really? Yeah. And 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 what it's going to be. For I'm, I'm not going to do it. Because I, oh, I don't have to, so you know. You, you actually don't have I, to. I don't have to. No one has to. No one has to uh, pronounce. You know, offer their pronouns. But yeah. if if there's a situation which there might be at some stage soon where people ask me to, well, yeah, well I have been asked actually to give you know pronouns at, at the bottom of email signatures. Um, I'm just well, I'm, I'm pleased to come out to say that I, I'm I'm, bi <laughs> I'm, bi I'm binary. My pronouns are one zero one zero one zero. <laughs> That's a, that's a computer binary code joke for those who may not have got it. But <laughs> oh, that went sh over my head. I have to say, no, but uh, but it's it's th that's that's you know that's happening in 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 mm. so many workplaces, um, and and it's only people who work for themselves or, or or work in places like this, I suppose, that that it, it's not coming for you. But Douglas Murray always used to say this, didn't he? If you don't think this stuff is coming for you, well, it, it really is. But how often do you actually use these pronouns? You know, like I don't see any situation in which we're sitting here. I would never say he. You know, I was no. taught who's she, the cat's mother, right? I would mm. say Philip over here, or was you or Philip, you yeah. know? And it's very rare that I think you get into or, a situation that idiot. where yeah. someone is in the earshot of you referring to well, them no, no, because as he. It, no, but it's in a or, corporate situation where you're sort of like oh, dealing right, with emails right. and everything like that. You know, you're going to have to keep saying they, them, or she, or whatever it is. But there was a, there was a lovely situation uh, I, I witnessed a, a, a few years ago, a couple of people, I won't tell you what context it was, uh, but, but but people were just making coffee and they were talking about something they'd been to see um, and this this woman uh, uh, misgendered the performer and the other person said it's they actually uh, I said okay and did the same thing did the same thing as this um, as this counselor and misgendered about three or four times and the other people watching it, it, it makes the room so incredibly uncomfortable Right. Isn't it meant to really? It, and it's meant to, but yeah. but the the point is, they're talking about someone who isn't there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, 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 this yeah, is yeah. why it's it's so insidious and it's so ideological. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to kind of um, police someone's thought, even though the person isn't there. I think you know the basis of a lot of this is just very very ordinary, tedious people wanting to be more interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, we used to call it sexual tourism. Mm. Basically, it was like, you know, oh, I'm a little bit lesbian and things like that. You know, basically now it's non-binary. It's like they're boring. There's nothing else. So basically, what can they do? They can do this kind of stuff. I Don't mean, I'm, well, we're old enough to remember the traditional transsexuals. You know, I think of someone like like uh, Jan Morris. Yeah. You know, Jan Morris. Yeah, yeah, originally yeah. James Morris. Conundrum. Who wrote the amazing yeah. book? Conundrum. Wonderful writer, great yeah. travel writer, excellent historian, did yeah. a wonderful history of the British Empire. Yeah. Now, those traditional transsexuals, of which there are many today, are aghast at these trans extremists that mm. we see today. So if there's someone like that, and you know, and I have my father's distant cousin mm. for 40 years has lived as a transsexual person, I'm happy to call such yeah. a person she, if that's actually the way that they live their lives. Mm. And they're not, they're living quietly. 
I, I, I'm entirely happy with that. It's when you get to this radical situation where, you, where there are, there's an aggressive response, there's this demand that, it's be, that it be done, and now we're in a situation where, forget the 73 genders, the NHS has 100 genders, you know? And how can anyone be expected to know who is a Z and a Z, who's the umpa and the lumpa, you know? <laughs> and, and, and who's the Tweedledum and tweed, Tweedledee? You know, I mean, it's, it's complete no, but this nonsense. Is, but this is the point, that, that, that's a good point you, you highlight there, actually. Um, you know, I remember there were a couple when I was in UKIP. There were a couple of, you know, there was Frank Malloy. Do you remember Frank Malloy? Oh, yeah, Frank the, Malloy, the, the, the boxer. boxing yeah. promoter. You know, <laughs> suddenly, <laughs> suddenly became, you know, a woman. And uh, essentially, but one, you know, kind of showed a certain respect, Madam this, Madam yeah. that, you know, and everything. But the thing is, is that when it is when it becomes aggressive like this, it makes your own attitude harden. But, but that's the problem, and that's I'm the less thing. likely yeah. now. But that's what you're seeing even with the gay community. They're, that's why you have the yeah. LGB alliance, because mm. they are so uh, worried about the reaction people are going to have towards, the, oh. towards normal gay people it, when they see what the LGBTQ plus IA lobby does with yeah. all of these it, it, It's It's the difference cases. between seeing someone and, and being polite and, and going along because you feel as though you want to or there's no problem with it but when they start demanding mm. that you not only think that way but believe that fantasy is reality yeah, yeah exactly, that's yeah. the key thing the problem it? the problem is this the, the giveaway is this because they can't inf legally enforce it it's no one saying that the problem is is if they just if you didn't have your you know your pronouns that's one thing but then other people who've done it will say why oh, it's didn't pressure. You, it's pressure. You know, why didn't you give your pronouns? Yeah. Or so you don't have pronouns? You know, yeah. you just say, well, no, I don't, because I would have put them if I did. Yeah. You know. But in fact, it's to actually. It's a bit like they say, how can you tell a vegetarian? Because they'll tell you. Tell you. <laughs> right. It's <laughs> the same sort of thing, I think. But uh, anyway, vegetarian. <laughs> don't get me on that. Um, <laughs> no. Thank you very, very much, Philip. Thanks, Ray. Um, oh, of course. Um, I didn't introduce, you know, our senior fellows of the NCF here. I completely forgot in my excitement. Anyway, um, we shall see you next time. Thanks very much. Hello. If you're enjoying the New Culture Forum channel and you believe in our mission, may I invite you to join our membership scheme at the link below or on our website, newcultureforum.org.uk. Our work is more important now than ever, and we have great plans ahead for the future, but we can't do it without your support. From as little as three pounds per month, you can help ensure that we continue on our mission. As a member, you'll receive a range of benefits, including access to exclusive content, invitations to our private events, including here at our studios, free copies of our books, and much, much more, including, of course, our famous NCF mug. If you aren't able to become a member, then please help us by clicking this button and subscribing to our channel. It's completely free. Just remember to also click the bell icon so that you can get notifications when we post new videos. Thank you.